E01, column shaft start, not the backup. Sorry about that. I don't usually include the backups. And um, for those of you on the cheat sheet, we're on page six, okay? So you got a little something you can actually read instead of my screen way up there. I apologize in advance, especially to the people in the back. Um, this, because the distance is so far away, it's going to be really hard for me to, I'm going to do a lot of zooming in and out because there's just no other way around it. That's the only thing I don't like about this example. Okay, um, there's a shaft in here already. Uh, and I created this shaft with a sweep. And you may find that a little odd, right? Because what would be your first instinct? What shape would you tend to use? Revolve, right? Everybody would think of using a revolve here. Um, I didn't use a revolve because what can't revolves do? They can't use profiles, exactly. So my sweep cur path is just a circle and plan, and then I'm sweeping, and you can see the way I'm highlighting here, it's hollow in the middle, it has to be, right? Because you can't have a sweep that touches itself. So I just fill in the middle with, a, with an extrusion, okay? Um, so anyway, let's uh, select this guy then, that's what we care about, and that profile is down here. And I've also labeled that start. So I'm gonna right click that and edit it. And there's the profile, and this is what I'm saying. I can't really show you both ends at the same time. So if we zoom in, uh, you know, I do have some stuff going on down here with a little fillet at the bottom, and you know, up here, I've got you know a little bit of stuff going at the top. So the only thing I didn't show you is intastis height subtracts out this. So intastis height would get me here, but because I've got moldings at the top, I'm just you know subtracting those out first before I run the other formula. And the location we're trying to get to is right there at the end of you know, those two arcs, right? This re these two reference planes, okay? Now this one is, if you ever need to do this for real, I'll give you permission to cheat here. This is an arc with a ginormous radius. With the kind of ellipse we're talking about, most people would never notice the difference. But if you're a purist, compulsive like me, that ain't gonna cut it, especially if you know you can do it with the ellipse, okay? So um, I give you permission to keep the arc if you're okay with that. Um, I'm going to delete that bad boy, <laughs> okay? No arc, please. Okay, so we're gonna put the uh, ellipse in there instead. So uh, what we need to do that is, as I said, we need that big nasty formula. And I've got my text file right here, so I'll just take that uh, formula, copy it to my clipboard, just did control C, and uh, come over here, and what I need is a reference plane way up here somewhere. I can just name this uh, major axis. And then um, I need a dimension down to the lower third. And that is gonna be my, do I already have it? Yeah, semi-major axis, currently set at zero, but it'll just adopt whatever that number is, okay? So when I go to family types now, um, these, uh, these guys are not uh, filled in. I thought I had those in, I guess I'm gonna have to put them in. So anyway, this one is the big nasty formula, okay? And um, division by zero. Oh yeah, because these guys, all right. I hate that there's no undo in here. Okay, um, yeah, I don't wanna escape. Okay. Um, so uh, the formulas for those guys, do I have those written down anywhere? Because otherwise, shame on me. Um, oh, yeah, I got them on page uh, 45. Okay, cool. Um, so, with that, oh, they were in my notepad, too. Yeah, duh. All right, why don't you look at your own stuff, Paul? Okay, there we go. Um, so I, I totaled together all that junk at the top and just called it top minus. Okay, so control C. So in TAS's total is the shaft height divided by two thirds, or times two thirds, right? So that gives me the top two thirds minus the top minus, right? So that's gonna take care of that zero. And then the base radius is just base diameter divided by two, but let me make sure that that's what I put here, yeah. So I have a base diameter parameter. The base diameter parameter, by the way, drives the whole thing, you know? So all the other formulas are derived from it. And um, the other one was top diameter divided by two, which is that 85%. Right, so that gives me 4.25. So the first three are easy, right? Everybody clear with those? And then the big nasty formula comes next. And uh, currently my value is, uh, let me see if I can 
get this to be a little bigger here. Okay, so my value is currently 14.5, right? And when we put the big nasty formula in there, and I hate, that's the only thing I don't like about zooming these is they, they zoom in funny ways. Now it's 10.39, probably several more decimals than that, but I just rounded off to the th uh, three decimals. And that'll pull that reference plane down. So now all I need to do is draw my ellipse, uh, elliptical arc actually, and I'm gonna do it across the belly here and then pull it straight up and snap to there. Now obviously that's more of an ellipse than I want. Um, this next thing, uh, an elliptical arc is actually kind of like a special spline because if you look at it carefully, I know the guys in the back can't see this, but and I can't zoom that, I'm, I'm sorry. The, uh, the grip points are just the size they are, you know, right? But those of you in the front, if you look really carefully at the grips at the bottom of the ellipse, you see how they got the little tiny blue dot with the circle around it, which is the same kind of grip you get with um, an ellipse, or a spline, rather. And there's an illustration in the, uh, uh, in the sheet sheet of the spline back on uh, page five, so you might be able to see it there a little more clearly. You know, these, these two little il uh, illustrations here, so to get to the, the dot in the center, um, you, you need to use your tab key, okay? Because if you, um, if it's giving you the circle, you know, you, you, you need to tab. In this case, it gave me the dot, but you know, just pay attention to that. So the reason I want the dot is because I want to actually shorten the ellipse, right? And I don't want to shorten it there, I want to shorten it actually way over here. And I'm gonna get close, zoom in, and um, I'm going to get rid of this just so that we can really see this happen. Let me select this guy. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Do it again. I'm going to get close. But I want you to see that this guy is perfect. Look at that. Isn't math great? <laughs> you know? I mean, it, it just it can't be wrong. I mean, it's going to hit those reference planes every time. And all you got to do is align and lock, and you're done. Okay? Um, and it gives you that... Uh, Elliptical antastasis, you won't get the seam. It's very smooth, it's beautiful, and it's correct. And I like that, okay? So, um, you've seen me do a lot of aligning locks, you're gonna see me do some more. So I'm gonna stop there. There is a completed file of that, and um, you know, it's a column shaft, right? It looks kinda like this.